pretend you did not notice that. So now I'm saying, hey, HTTPS, there's this cert that's cool with me. That's cert hash. So now I'm associating saying that one's, that, that, that one's OK. All right? Now I'll go back into my config file and tell IIS that HTTPS is cool in the gang. All right? Shut that down. Fire it up again and hope to God it works. Dun, 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 dun. <gasps> there is a problem. What, you mean I can't just make an SSL cert and make it totally trusted and not get a giant warning that I'm a bad person? OK. So much for my man in the middle attack. Well, what if I pick it up and drag it into trusted root certificates? <laughs> Ain't nobody dope as me. I'm just so fresh, so clean. That's right. SSL, port 80, trusted cert. Now suddenly my development environment looks a little bit more like my staging environment. It makes it easier to develop. It's a hassle. It's a hassle to have to go and deploy out to IIS and configure IIS and mess with all that kind of stuff. So now, of course, I could have done that with a host's file and made a fake cert, but it would have actually looked like my own machine. Great way to punk your friends and office mates. <laughs> PayPal.com, it's possible. <laughs> I want YouTube video if anybody does it. <laughs> so IIS Express, uh, start using it. It is a freaking awesome. It is extremely powerful. The, the example that I just gave you was Baroque, to be clear. Not broke, but Baroque, complicated. But it's a complicated scenario. Certs are complicated. Uh, it is literally just as easy as press F5, and it'll run in IIS. All that SSL stuff, interestingly enough, is made easier, believe it or not, by, uh, by web matrix. And don't worry, I'm not going to turn this into a web matrix talk. But if I go into web matrix and like bring in the bakery or something, and uh, click on uh, settings. So all that work that I just did. <laughs> so what WebMatrix does is they'll take, they take, when they install WebMatrix, they give you a self-signed cert for free. And they reserve 443,000 all the way up to 444,000 or something. And it just, click a button and it just works. Because they did all the cert work for you. Um, it's not as classy as mine. And it does not involve PowerShell. But it's still really significant. Show me how to do it. Did we add that? Oh, don't, don't even tell me that the entire demo was a huge waste of time. <laughs> Which of these should I pick? <laughs> it's close to, too much? This is way easier. So you use the web matrix ones. You use the IS Express ones or web matrix ones. Right. So that was added in SP1. It's SP1. Hey. <laughs> now can I do 443 or is it just 44? Yeah. Okay. So there was still validity in the last half hour of my life. Okay. So a demo has told me, which would have been great to know yesterday. <laughs> Was that SP1 includes that same checkbox except in an obscure property grid? <laughs> so then it's the same exact model, a self signed certificate that was installed and then 443,000 and up. Okay, cool. I prefer my way. <laughs> That's pretty sweet. I did not know that. Mark on. Cool. <laughs> Best part is it didn't completely invalidate the, uh, the demo because that would have been bad. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Which is frustrating because you were up here running through the demos with me like five minutes before. <laughs> yeah. 
So sounds like checkbox for basic SSL, and then my crazy thing for if you really want your URL to look right. Okay. All right. Uh, what else? What else? What else is fun? Ooh, community stuff. Check this out, you guys. Where'd my uh, where'd my one go? Do do fresh, fresh and clean. So um, we did the open source fest yesterday, and uh, saw some pretty cool stuff. Uh, you saw how I used the MVC HTML5 templates library. That was from the community. Uh, Elma is from the community, and Elma was a really cool a log tracer. But check this out. If I go add library package reference, and come up here, and I'm going to put on a system called Glimpse. You guys see this thing? You seen it? It's like it's spreading like crack. It's just like everyone's like, "Have you seen it? Did you get some? Oh my goodness!" And everyone else is like, "What are they talking about? I want some." So we like Elma, right? Elma's the greatest, right? You can't think of anything in your life better than Elma. That would, I mean, Elma completed my life, right? You had me at Elma. Uh, but I just installed Glimpse, and I'm going to say slash Glimpse slash config, and I'm going to just turn Glimpse on. And Glimpse is going to give me a glimpse <laughs> into uh, what's going on in my application. See the little crazy eyeball that's staring at me? Oh, not that eyeball. There we go. <laughs> Does it say only for testing purposes? This is my, comp it's my main machine. I may be a victim of software counterfeiting. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to click on the, on the little eyeball down here and check that out. So what's that? I don't know. It's a div, huh? It's freaking Firebug for MVC. So what it's doing is it's hooking in. In MVC3, they added all these hooks, hooks for dependency injection and hooks for um, places to look at your action invokers, filters, blah, 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 all the different stuff. It's insight into what's going on in your application. You may be familiar with Phil Hack's uh, route debugger, right? Just like Cassini, you never have to use it again. <laughs> so what Glimpse does is it gives me like a Firebug-like uh, experience down here at the bottom, you can see my uh, routes appearing down here. One of the things that I found really, really surprising, uh, and, and Phil, maybe you can answer a question on this. Uh, here I'm just viewing like home, but maybe I'll go and view like about. This is the views and the view engines that it went off looking at. So it went and said, hey, is there a web form view engine? Yeah, yeah, but I don't, I don't see that, I don't see that, I don't see that. And then it eventually found the about page here. It gives you a lot of insight into the, the flow of your application. It shows the partials. So I see that there are eight view checks to see in the building of this page here. What if I uh, went back to my global ASAX and went down in here? And what I'll do probably is I'll type this, and then there'll be a checkbox for it. So. <laughs> Can I just remove one, or do I have to clear them and then add one back? How do I just remove one? Is that remove? Could you say that less condescending? <laughs> remove at? Oh, so I can't remove. How do I know it's, how do I know it's zero? I don't have an instance. Is, is zero it? Yeah? How would they know that? Oh, because of the order that they were in Glimpse. OK. This, this demo's on you. OK. I mean, safety. <laughs> <laughs> safety first. Now, I'm turning Glimpse on this way, but there's actually a bookmarklet that you can use that makes it easier to turn it on if you like. Rock on. So did that make my system faster, Phil? Probably. It absolutely makes your system faster. <laughs> <laughs> because there's less things in that collection. It must. I don't know how. Maybe, maybe a millisecond. Who knows? But it's cool, though. Because I never would have known that if I didn't have that insight. And that's what I think is really interesting. Whether or not it makes it faster is, is immaterial. What's cool about this, though, is that I can also do stuff like tracing. So what if I went into like my, uh, my home about controller, 
And I did something like uh, trace dot uh, trace error. And right, something bad has just happened. And then we'll run that. And that appears up there. So my tracing stuff can actually be happening in the background. So I could go and instrument all my code in that way that we always do, right? Because we're all running trace regularly and then checking our trace logs. So remember trace.axd? You never have to use it again. <laughs> so I thought this was a really, really great application. It actually shows you executed methods and how they got found, shows you your environment, configuration. Look at that. It's all in the browser. This is not a plugin, right? Let's just prove it, eh? Maybe we should bring up Opera. So here I got to hit glimpse again. Why are you laughing at me, man? Don't bring up Opera. Are you saying because it won't work? It's not tested? OK, I won't test it right now. <laughs> But that's actually, this is HTML down here. This is all magic in, uh, in John Resig right here, right? Is it, is it jQuery? Sweet. So uh, this right here, brought down as a NuGet package, trivial to install, provides incredible value, and is so, so useful. This is a great example of why I keep using Lego when I talk about the web stack. Because before, the Lego pieces were the wrong size. You'd get these big Duplo kind of blah, 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 SharePoint. And then you'd get these little. <laughs> and then, and then, you'd get, then you'd get these little tiny, like the little onesies. And they're always like the clear onesies that you get stuck on your toes when you're walking on the carpet. You know, and it's like blah, 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 WCF. And now, the pieces fit together right. In all respect, with all respect to the SharePoint guys, SharePoint uses OData now. And you can talk to any SharePoint list with OData. And WCF has JSON and POX and clean uh, web services. And the stuff that Glenn Block and those guys are doing fits in nicely with our stuff. And uh, you've got OData via jQuery. And we're shipping jQuery and, and uh, Modernizer. And you can use Entity Framework code first or model first or database first. And you can use it with SQL Server or SQL Server Compact. And SQL Server Compact's actually X copy deployable. And Web Deploy works. And you can click a freaking checkbox and get SSL, <laughs> suddenly, suddenly the, the Lego pieces are the right size. And that's why, when I said in the keynote, and I mean this sincerely, that I have had more fun working on the web platform in the last year than ever before. And then you got something like a Glimpse, or an Elma, or an MVC HTML5 templates, or an IE9ify, or any of these other great plugins that you can just bring down as open source, where open source is as easy as add reference. And it's just fun. I, I was amazed that Scott Gu let me do it, but I don't know if you noticed in the keynote that my, my title, when they introduced me there, said, Optimizing for Programmer Happiness. Microsoft's been spending a lot of time optimizing for programmer productivity. And productivity and happiness are actually related things. Rather than optimizing for productivity, if you optimize for fun and enjoyment and enthusiasm, the productivity will fall out of that. So I would really encourage you guys to start taking a look at these Lego pieces and figuring out which pieces that you like. If you don't like EF code first, make an nHibernate MVC scaffolder. If you have an AS400 that talks old school web services, that's fine. Come up with a scaffolder for that or some kind of a system that will let you use the other Lego pieces. You already have Lego pieces. Snap them together the way that you want. I would encourage you to go to a couple different sessions. Steve Sanderson is here. He's come all the way from Bristol, England, and he's the guy that worked on MVC scaffolding. I believe he's talking in this room at 2. Come and see his talk. He's amazing. Phil is talking about MVC tonight at 5 o'clock. He's going to go much, much deeper in some of the stuff that's going on in the tooling. Definitely check that out. And then me and Phil tomorrow in the Ha Ha Show are at uh, what time is that? 10.30. 10 and we're going to do NuGet. We're going to talk all about NuGet. How do you make them? How do you publish them? Can you use NuGet in continuous integration scenarios? Are they hard to publish? What are some advanced examples? The Elma example was simple. Bring in a DLL. Works great. This Glimpse example is just such a, uh, a powerful testament to what we've built with NuGet 